Hi guys, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I work on bigger projects where we have a lot of data, a lot of big video files uh, that we have to share between multiple computers, various editors, uh, but also how I do it sort of in my home studio uh, while saving a lot of money uh, and without the need of setting up a big uh, sophisticated uh, network where uh, everybody has access to uh, sort of a network attached storage device like this one for example that I have from QNAP. Uh, so I'll kind of show you guys how I do this again, sort of the indie cheaper way. So first thing I'm going to talk about uh, when you're working on those big projects, we have a lot of uh, large files is obviously having somewhere to store all that data. Now, traditionally before, especially I used to just get a lot of portable uh, SSDs or, or even before that, you know, standard to sort of hard drives and I would just connect them all to the computer. And uh, now that can work if you have just one person working, if you have multiple people that need to be able to access those files and then that can very quickly get complicated because you either have to make copies, multiple copies of all that footage on multiple drives and then if somebody updates the project on one computer, you need to then copy the files over, you know, you know, the whole thing. Well, basically that's when having a, a NAS or a network attached storage device uh, sort of can be very, very helpful because that's essentially what it is, is it's, it's a hard drive that attaches to your network and this way it allows multiple devices to access it at the same time. Uh, there's a bunch of these already that I reviewed previously. This is the latest one that I've sort of fell in love with and I've been using over the last year. Uh, this is from QNAP and this one as you can see it has here eight bays and actually with my current setup right now having these eight hard drives I have it set up in a RAID uh, so that means that I have a sort of a data redundancy in case one of the hard drive fails I can still swap out that hard drive and, and put in a new one and all the data will copy back onto that damaged drive or the new drive uh, and that allows me then to kind of have a peace of mind that uh, again if something goes wrong with one of these drives that I, I don't automatically lose everything but I, I still have quite a bit of space on this. So right now with my current setup, I have just over 75 terabytes of uh, storage available on this NAS. Uh, that's definitely, you know, again, if you're just somebody starting out and working like I used to years ago with little portable drives, you might think that's overkill. Trust me, when you start working on larger projects and shooting 6K, 8K, whatever raw footage, that stuff can fill up very quickly. Now, right now, I still haven't reached halfway there, so I'm still pretty good. And I am actually pretty usually try to be very conservative and try not to kind of, you know, store too many useless files so if I can clean up my projects and keep them kind of streamlined, I do that. But obviously, when it comes to the raw footage that we record, I want to keep all of that in there. So that's definitely where you want to have a nice big sort of a beefy storage device like, like a NAS, especially, is going to give you. Uh, so like I said, you have safety in case of one of the drive fails, things like that. And actually what I like about QNAP in general is they make it fairly easy to set up everything. They actually have like a little sticker here on the top which tells you where you go. You kind of connect it to your network, you go to a certain uh, web address on your browser and you can set up your account there, your username, all that stuff, set up your your storage, what the rate configuration you want it to be in, and sort of also set up your, your folders. You can create sort of shared folders that you can then access uh, through the network or, you know, using different devices. Uh, but once you have it all configured, uh, I at least found myself after that, uh, that it's not so easy when it comes to actually then trying to get this to work in on a budget in a small sort of a home studio like I have up here. So in my current setup right now, I have mainly two computers uh, that, are, that I'm editing off of. So me and an assistant. Now sometimes I'll have, for example, like here I have with me my laptop and uh, I wanna be able to also connect my laptop to my computer. So sometimes, for example, when I'm traveling, I'll be working on my laptop and I wanna then be able to offload, let's say the footage onto the NAS so then everybody can access it. Or sometimes I actually, when I travel and I need all of that data, uh, let's say on some big project that I'm editing and I might be editing in my laptop, but I need access to all of that. I'm, I actually have taken this NAS with me. There's other ones you can get that are, let's say, less drives that are smaller, a bit lighter, definitely a lot more portable. And I'm not going to say that this is, you know, a NAS for a storage, you know, basically network attached. Uh, storage device is something that you want to really be, be really I guess normally traveling with because they're not really meant for that I guess portable drives are better for that but again there's been times where I've been working on these big large projects where I just couldn't fit it all on portable uh, hard drives and that's when 
I literally had to take this this big guy with me here. Uh, and the cool thing is though that I figured out an affordable and a pretty easy way to still be able to kind of work with this drive almost as if it was a regular portable hard drive. And then like I said, the second I come back home to my studio, I plug it in and all my computers have access to it. Now, if you know anything about, uh, you know, if network attached storage devices is that uh, in order for them to operate fast and definitely when you're editing video and especially when you're doing again, 4K, 6K or 8K large video files that you're working with and you need access to them, you need this to be able to transfer a lot of data really fast. Well, how do you do that? Uh, well, since everything's connected through ethernet cable, through your network, that means you have to step up your network. The traditional sort of a home setup network, like if, let's say if you have a, just a basic router that allows you to connect, let's say, uh, for ethernet devices, is gonna be one gigabit network. And that's, I found that like, if you're editing 4K footage, but like stuff that's like, you know, an H.264 or even H.265 codecs, smaller files basically you can still work with it now if you have two people it can start getting slower like when you have two people trying to access those files uh, at the same time uh, but you can generally still work now once you start having basically working with those larger raw files one gigabit network is definitely not going to cut it so you want to step that up and really the ultimate way to go is to go and get a 10 gigabit network Problem with that is, aside from the cost, and they, the cost has been coming down uh, over the last few years, but it's still not like that cheap. For basically, you're talking about like just to get a switch, uh, that, that's t a 10 gigabits basically switcher uh, that allows you to connect multiple devices on your network. The cheapest one I found right now, I think it's like $700, uh, but that one only has two connections, two gigabit, 10 gigabit connections. The other ones are just one gigabit connections. Uh, so. That's the problem. And also the next problem is that uh, they're all very loud because they, they heat up a lot. They have these loud fans that go on and all that stuff. And that's something then that you have to keep in mind because usually those, like when you go to like a professional studio where they have a nice fast network built in, they have a dedicated room, usually actually with air conditioning, cooling, something that keeps all the, you know, all your pieces and everything in there nice at a nice temperature. And, and it's closed off, so you don't hear all of that. Like for example, here with my home studio where I am record my video here, right next to me here, I have my editing station, right behind this camera, I have another editing station. Uh, I can't afford to basically have this somewhere, here, you know, and basically make a lot of noise. So thank God that the, this QNAP actually, uh, if, you know, network attached storage device is uh, fairly quiet. Like right now it's on, and I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can feel it with my hand here in the back of the fans are going, but it's actually fairly quiet. Every so on, you will hear like when the drives are turning over, you'll hear something, um, little sounds, but that's not like a continuous, like a noise of a fan or something. Like you're gonna hear with a lot of these 10 bit, uh, gigabit basically network switches. So that's one good thing about this. But the problem, like I said, without the 10 gigabit network switches, how the hell do you access this and still have it go at a faster uh, rate or uh, basically data rate than you would gonna get with a standard one gigabit um, network setup? So the way that I found for this to work is that I'll basically still connect this to my standard one gigabit network that I have in my studio. And, you know, just so that I have access with all my, even let's say if I'm remotely working and I just need to connect over the internet, which you can do with this. So I can remotely connect to this over a browser, all that stuff. I can still do all those things. But when I'm actually, let's say traveling with this and I have my laptop and I have this and I'm not on, connected to any network, or even when I'm here in my home studio and I have this connected to a network, I still have other connections here in the back. So I'm gonna turn this around and kind of show you guys what's available. So actually here maybe just a quick setup in case I'm wondering, obviously a power button. Uh, here you have your like so for the, you, your display, you can kind of see different settings or warnings. You can actually connect a USB, like a portable hard drive to this and you just click that button and it will copy whatever data is on the hard drive to your NAS. So now suddenly everybody has access. So that's for example great if I'm, again, I'm on location and I have all this footage that I recorded on some portable drive. I just plug it in there and I, you know, back it up right away onto my NAS. But here in the back, I'll show you guys what other sort of connections you have. Now, it is a little bit heavy. That's why I said it's not really something you want to be traveling with. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to show you guys what you have. So as you can see, the fans are moving. <laughs> 
And uh, uh, here's what you have. Here you have these two basically standard one gigabit connections. So this is, again, you can connect it to, you know, directly to a computer or, and one of them, for example, you can connect it to, uh, to your switcher or to your, your modem in your home network. And then right behind it here, you have your USB-C and USB basically connections behind it. So you can connect it that way. Uh, you can connect again, other hard drives, things like that. Uh, you'll notice you actually have an HDMI connection here. That's because this thing can work as a sort of a media device. Um, so you can use it to stream, for example, your, your maybe, you know, your dailies, your footage, or just, I don't know, if you want to uh, have store all your movies or whatever, your music on there. Uh, you have also other like other connections up here. I actually set up my Plex uh, basically uh, drive on this. So it's again, my Plex account can access my, my uh, like a specific folder that I created. Uh, on my NAS here and I can access that from anywhere in the world through the internet or when I'm in my home studio or my home network I can access that and I can actually stream all of my like all of our home videos I kind of usually store there but also any kind of movies that I bought over the years or DVDs that I've had I digitize them and I have sort of my own home video music sort of a um, library right there that anybody in my family can access uh, you know whether we're at home or whether we're traveling. Uh, so that's another cool thing that you can do. Now you'll notice here, you actually have another Ethernet connection and that's because that's the one, the 10 gigabit connection, so the fastest one that you can get. There's only one of them. So obviously you either you can either connect this to your 10 gigabit network switch, uh, which like I said, there's loud, expensive and all that stuff, or uh, you can connect this directly to one of your computers. So that's kind of what I'm doing, like when I'm working and, you know, whether with one of my computers in my studio, I'll usually just connect it to a computer that I need it to. But in case I need to be able to connect to two computers, well, you notice you have here on top, uh, you have basically an, a card and you actually have another expansion card that you can, you can put in other basically things, other accessories that uh, QNAP kind of provides. Now what this expansion card actually gives you is two, they look like USB-C basically connections, but they're actually Thunderbolt 3. That's the fastest connection that you can get. And you can, you know, uh, you actually use this to connect that to your computer. Uh, and you can use that again, sort of like a normal ethernet cable. Now make sure you get CAT seven or higher cables because anything lower than that, this is just not gonna handle data rate. Um, so, but anyway, so once you have that cable, you can connect it to this, but of course this is Thunderbolt three. So the way to do that is you can use one of these basically USB-C uh, uh, to f f Ethernet basically adapters, as you can see. And you basically plug this here in the back, and then, you know, here on this side, you have your Ethernet 3 connection, and that's where you would plug in your Ethernet cable. Now, what if your computer, like let's say my laptop here, it's a decent MSI laptop that I use for editing, but it doesn't have a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection. I mean, many of these, you know, notebooks and laptops now don't have either any Ethernet connections. Mine actually happens to have this, the standard one gigabit connection, but it doesn't have 10 gigabit. Well, what do you do then? Uh, well, if you have Thunderbolt 3, like a lot of Apple computers have, then again, you can get an adapter, the, the Thunderbolt 3 to Ethernet, that will actually allow you to connect uh, 10 gigabits, or uh, the way what I'm doing here is I have Ethernet basically uh, adapter again. This one's actually also from QNAP, and this one is uh, it, it's um, it converts it basically from it, it can work with the, the Thunderbolt three, but it can also work with USB C. So I actually have it connected to my laptop here using USB C. So that's what this goes to, and then here I connect my Ethernet, and that Ethernet cable is what actually goes in here into this computer right now. Uh, into this, this drive. So that's how my laptop right now basically kind of converts into like one cable but using this little adapter. Uh, and uh, this thing, by the way, I think it retails for around $80. Depends again where you get it. So I'll post the links down below. You guys can check it out. But for around $80, you can get this. Now keep in mind that this will not give you 10 gigabit speeds. This is actually rated at five gigabits. So half the speed of 10 gigabits. So ideally you'd want to still get like, let's say a 10 gigabit network uh, card or something that you can plug into your computer uh, or to your PC. And that's kind of how I work on my other editing station up here is I have a 10 gigabit uh, network card attached there. And then I can just use the Ethernet cable directly to connect there. And then I'm using this adapter actually 
with the uh, Thunderbolt 3 and I connect that to my other basically computer that I have behind my camera here uh, that I'm editing on. So it's still getting decent speeds, better than one gigabit. Uh, might not be 10 gigabit, but it's still decent. And I'll, I'll show you kind of what kind of speeds I'm getting with this. So yeah, this is one way of going with it. So with this actually, uh, you know, once I have this kind of connected, the way it works now is fairly easy. And again, part of it is because of the way that QNAP kind of operates. So like here on my laptop, um, if once you connect it all, obviously you have to set up your, your NAS, your drives, your RAID, all that stuff, set up your account. But once you have that all set up, you can take this and connect it to any computer, like I said, using, let's say, this adapter, and then you install QFinder Pro. It's like an app that QNAP kind of gives you. Um, and yeah, you just click here to uh, scan. And once it finds your drive, so you can see up here, I have my TAF uh, video NAS1. Uh, it shows you basically your IP address. You can actually click on that, it will open it in a browser. And once it's in a browser, you put in your login credentials that you set it up your, your NAS with you know, your your, uh, your username, your password, and you log in. Once you're actually uh, here, like logged in, you'll see it, it kind of looks almost like a like a desktop, like an operating system. And that's kind of what I like about QNAP, is that they make it really kind of visually and, and sort of just lo lo logically kind of, e the way they lay out everything is easy. So let's say if you want to set up uh, your shared folders on this, or, or let's say your Plex server, all that stuff, it's pretty straightforward. Um, like for example, here I can access any of my drives, like. There's my main folder here where I have all my like projects and my films backed up, all that stuff. Uh, that's one of the, the, the files there. And uh, actually, yeah, I can go, for example, here and I can uh, add folders too. So I can on, on my big set, basically network here, uh, which is called Big Antos. <laughs> I can add now, let's say, a shared folder. So I can add a shared folder. Uh, I can you know, give it a name, all that stuff, uh, adjust my settings and then you know just click Create. Once you have that, obviously, uh, you can just access it and I can actually, you know, I could say click here and I can see my folders and I can just literally drag and drop files and like, let's say, copy them to there. So that's great, right? I can kind of treat this as, a, as if it was like my desktop. But of course, the problem is that then in my editing software, whether it's DaVinci Resolve, Premiere or whatever it is that you're using, I can't access those files, you know, using a browser. It needs to actually be accessible through my basically my folders in my computer. So on Windows, it's actually pretty easy. So so in Windows Explorer, I go to basically this PC, uh, and then here I click on the, on the on the computer to map network drive. Click that, and you put in basically your IP address that your, your, your NAS is connected to. So you can again see here in Q, Q Finder or QNAP Finder, um, uh, you can see that the IP address, so I basically type in that. So, and then I put in the name of my folder that I want to connect to. And you can choose what drive you want it to be and all that stuff. And you just click finish. And uh, first time you're doing this, by the way, it's going to ask you to log in. So again, your login credentials that you set up with your NAS. You have to put that in there and you can do it so that it reconnects each time you restart the computer. And after that, it's literally like as you know, long as you connect your NAS to your computer like or your laptop like I have it up here cool thing is that I can disconnect it and I can still use my computer but whenever I connect it that uh, map drive is always going to show up as if I actually had that drive in my computer and so now I can start my editing software and I can just go to that drive and I can access all of my files and I can edit with this very easily and like I said I've actually used it like that when I travel with my laptop and I need to take all of my files and all my like other, you know, like my stack footage that I sometimes use, my stack music, all that stuff. I'll just take this big drive with me. Um, you know, we've even done like some RV trips and stuff like that for certain projects where I was literally living and sleeping, you know, and eating and all that stuff in my RV and editing in there. Uh, if, because I can just set this up somewhere, plug it in, and, and again, I can have all of that data and I can carry it with me. And then when I come back home to my home studio, I just, you know, plug in, plug it this into uh, my other computer, that one gigabit connection, I plug it into uh, to my, in my network uh, switch, and then again, I'm back in business, and my other computers will be, to be able to recognize it, and any work that I did while I was traveling, I have access to it now. And like I said, I can, with this connection, well, with this kind of a trick of using these adapters, you can actually connect this without having a 10 gigabit network switch 
you can actually connect it to three basically devices at five gigabit speeds. Now, what kind of speeds are you gonna get? Well, here, let me show you. I'm just gonna literally drag and drop this folder. Uh, this is around two gigabytes. And as you can see, it goes really fast. It's basically, I'm getting uh, on average around 400 uh, megabytes per second. So that's definitely fast enough to be able to edit, again, raw files, 6K uh, raw files and stuff like that. Never had problems with that. So even though it's not technically a 10 gigabit expensive network in my home studio, I can still use this um, kind of on a, on a low budget. Again, using this cool little adapter um, from, from, uh, from QNAP. So, uh, again, follow the links in the description if you guys want to find out the latest price and all that stuff. Uh, now, there, if you do want to save yourself some money, like I said, this one's around $80. Not horrible, but if, let's say, you want to connect another device where maybe you don't care as having, you know, about having it going all the way up to 5 gigabits, then there's this other one uh, that I'm, I've been also using. This one goes to 2.5 gigabits. Uh, and I'm basically getting, on average, speeds of around like 230 megabytes per second. So almost, almost like I said, uh, half of the speed that I'm getting with the other one. Um, and, and this one though costs only $30 around there. Again, check out the prices that I have. And uh, and this one, what's cool is that it will, it will work with the USB-C connection, but it also comes with like a little adapter to just USB kind of send the connection. Uh, so you can also connect that way. Um, and again, it's 2.5 gigabits uh, Ethernet, uh, basically, adapter uh, on the other end. Now, of course, if you never had experience working with a network uh, attached storage device, then you might be kind of, you know, confused and you don't really know what 400 megabytes per second really means or why you should be excited or paying extra money to get those speeds. Well, if you basically were to connect this through a standard connection, the fastest kind of that I've been getting on a one gigabit network, and also depends again how you know, how much traffic there is and all that stuff. But I've been getting basically around like a hundred, hundred fifteen uh, megabytes per second. So you're getting almost four times the speed. So like I said, you're definitely if you're going to be working with those larger files, raw files and things like that, you definitely want to be able to to you know do that upgrade using using these uh, USB C adapters. Again, this isn't the only one that I have on my network. I have other ones, but like this one, like again, for the last year, it's been kind of my main go-to hard drive. I kind of, like I said, it's cool because it works again as a network storage device, but then it also works sort of as a standalone hard drive that I can take with me, like I said, when I'm editing while traveling. And, and as you can see, it has all these cool connections. You have, again, a chance to expand it. You can add a, other functionality to it. You can actually add M2 SSDs inside. It has two slots for that, which I haven't even done. Uh, I mean, it has a lot of RAM. And the cool thing is, uh, like, for example, when you go into the, the QNAP, uh, you know, their, their online software, their, their operating system, um, you can go, like, you can see, for example, I can click here my dashboard. And I can see all the details of like, you know, what's the temperature of my system right now, the, the CPU, the RPMs, like all, all of that stuff you can see. I can even access, you know, further. I can click on any of the drives. And I can see, for example, how are my hard drives doing, you know, if any of the drives are, you know, have any kind of problems with them. Things like that. Like those are all things you can kind of see here, monitor it. You can set up very easily, again, using their, their kind of operating system, you can set up automatic backups like i said if you connect these other like external you know portable drives you can just automatically have it let's say backup every every night when you go to sleep this thing will just make copies for you or again offloading footage all this cool stuff can give you notifications if you're having problems with let's say one of the drives so you'll get notified like, even through your email and things like that it will send you an, uh, an alert email and say hey one of your drives is whatever running slow or something's happening you can't you know some of the sectors have been corrupted so then that's when you know, okay, I need to buy a new drive, replace it. And then again, like I said, if you have it configured in the right rate configuration, which there's lots of different ways you can configure that. Again, follow the instructions when you get your NAS. Um, they're, they're pretty easy uh, to follow. So you can decide which uh, basically rate configura configuration you want. But yeah, once you have it done in the right rate configuration, uh, you can automatically back up that one drive, for example. So you have data redundancy, like all that stuff. Definitely, this is the way to go. You do not want to be like once as you're growing your business and you're working on bigger bigger projects, you definitely do not want to be working off of like just portable uh, hard drives or SSDs. Get yourself something like this. Now, it is an upfront cost. It's kind of basically like you're paying for another computer, 
but as you can see there's a lot of functionality in this and the fact that you can easily swap out the drives all that stuff but just you know and add other like multiple ways to connect to it that's really kind of what makes this thing special so definitely again if you guys are growing your business looking to getting something like this hopefully this sort of answers your questions of how i set up this whole system up here in my home studio of course if you guys have any more questions as always leave them in the comment section below and uh, if you want to find out about some of the other uh, hard drives or things like that uh, computers laptops my other you know camera reviews things like that again all of that stuff is on my website at tomantusfilms.com check it out subscribe to our newsletter if so you're staying up to date with any new posts and uh, that's it for this one i'll see you guys in the next video bye